hello, or well, good morning. Well, I think it's good afternoon actually, it's after, after 12 o'clock. So, as you can probably hear, it's a little bit blowy, and you've probably seen it's a little bit blowy too. But uh, anyway, yesterday we had uh, a storm, uh, Ciara, pass through. Uh, more last night than yesterday because uh, I think uh, in the UK uh, during the day uh, yesterday it was uh, it wasn't brilliant but here in uh, France oh look here's Elliot hello Elliot hello so we're looking after Elliot who is uh, my brother-in-law's dog while they're on holiday so yesterday was a little bit blowy less blowy today and uh, last night it was very blowy I think we had winds up to 120 kilometers an hour but so far no damage so I was using the uh, manual setting on this camera and uh, realized that uh, it was really having problems uh, focusing on things uh, this is my um, Nikon D3400 uh, DSLR camera uh, which obviously isn't uh, the same as using a uh, mobile phone uh, I have another camera which is uh, uh, another Nikon a Nikon A900 which is a, a compact camera uh, which is currently with my kids who are on holiday in the Alps sounds very posh but uh, you know, it's their first time going there and they've got my camera, my mini camera, so I've got to use my big camera. Anyway, um, a few weeks ago I had a little bit of a, a shopping trip. Um, some of these things in here I've bought before. But uh, the rest um, I bought on, well, two weeks ago from a shop called Carter Cash which is a sort of a motoring shop here in France which sells cheap bits and pieces for vehicles of all sorts so at the moment we have some wire mesh which is uh, bought from a company online uh, which I forget the name of uh, I'll put it in the in the write-up for the video uh, but it's basically to try to repair the front of the, the van where the bumper is damaged. I was thinking about actually taking the bumper off and putting the soundproofing behind it. But adding this in to make a false radiator grill. So we'll see what, how that goes in another, <laughs> another future video. Let me see how it goes there. So, uh, various bits and pieces bought uh, over the last few months. Uh, we've got some hammerite paint um, I can zoom on this can't I? Oh here we go some hammerite paint which is now out of focus I think to repair the bumpers or rather paint the bumpers at the back here and at the sides because you've got some side strengthening bars which I've probably shown you before there we go um, what else? Some draft excluder for the doors. Um, some spray paint for the bumper, which is that bottle there. What's this? Ah, shampooing action. Hmm. Um, well, that's going to have to be used soon because the van is pretty dirty at the moment. And I also have, sorry, for the camera angle. Well, this is empty, but it's epoxy steel, which is quite useful actually. That. There we go. I'm still having to manual focus the, this thing because uh, it seems that uh, the autofocus isn't working. Um, so, this epoxy steel stuff's pretty good. I've actually used it to repair some of the slabs over there on the terrace. I think this video is going to look pretty awful actually because uh, I get the impression I'm having to manual focus each time I point it at something either near or further away so we'll see so yeah I've, I've repaired some of the paving over there with this oh, turn it around poxy steel there we go is that in focus we'll soon see but it's quite useful as well to repair bits uh, in the plastic uh, which I've probably mentioned before um, I've repaired a hole in the dashboard with it 
uh, where the glove box door was um, because that kept falling off. There you go, quality, quality buildmanship uh, of uh, my Mega X um, van. So that's that. Um, what else? What else? What else? Spray paint. I've got to open the box. So in there we've got um, some red spray paint for the hubcaps. Probably it's a bit too posh uh, spraying the hubcaps, but they really need it because the they're supposed to be silver and they've gone grey. And there's also some um, some spray varnish too for the hubcaps, but I probably need some for the bumper too. Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, yeah, very important. Uh, screen wash and coolant. So those are two things that I really needed because uh, I'm worried that um, the um, we're going to have the same problem as last year, where uh, we had a, a water leak and uh, I blew the engine. Um, it was a very slow water leak, so slow I didn't even see any drips or anything. But uh, yeah, it resulted in the engine blowing up and having to be replaced. It's a bit drastic, but uh, there you go. And the screen wash because that ran out in the last video, which was taken back in no, well, not, not the last video, one of the last four videos was taken back in uh, November. And I bought these wonderful boxes, which I love very much. They're foldable. They used to pull the flap in there and they fold down just to replace these cardboard boxes okay so that's all that done um, I think that's about it regarding stuff from car to cash everything else was bought in the last few months so this year 2020 uh, I've got plenty of things I need to, to get on with all this stuff in here as well the last two things and I'll shut up or the last three things no two things so that's to do the headlights eventually, they need doing because they're going to be a bit foggy so it's a bit drastic because you've got to basically cut the top layer um, uh, with some fine sandpaper uh, I've seen it a lot on this method of doing things a lot on uh, YouTube so we'll see how that goes so basically this, this box here on the left is for the materials, the bits that I need to start uh, repairing the van. So this is uh, Colopabri Standard. Colopabri Standard means it's uh, a glue for your windscreen. But in fact, it's a glue to glue anything that's plastic uh, on these things. And I plan on using this to repair the driver's door because the inside panel is a bit, um, can we say, a bit wobbly. Uh, so that's going to be something that I'll use to, to repair that with. So basically at the moment um, this video is going to be me, or rather it's not going to see me doing it, but me uh, sorting through all these bits and pieces to put uh, stuff into boxes. So that box is already full, that's full of tools and bits I need to use like the battery charger, screwdrivers, this wonderful plastic kit uh, that I bought in Lidl, which is uh, basically uh, various little screws and bits and pieces and ties and all sorts that I can use to attach things. Uh, it doesn't sound very good saying I bought something from Lidl to attach things on my van, but in fact um, there's some quite useful bits and pieces in that and it wasn't that expensive, so I thought I'd get that. Uh, I haven't got posh gloves. Uh, I've got these basic standard ones, we'll see how we go with those when it comes to working on the oily bits and the engine and so on. Uh, sounds very impressive but all I plan on doing is changing the um, changing the glow plugs. Whoops, the door just blowed shut on me with the wind. So we'll leave it there and uh, I'm going to sort for all these bits and pieces in this box and put them into this box. And then we'll have the bonnet open so that we can uh, sort out the, the screen wash and the coolant. So, since earlier, I've uh, been in to have my lunch and uh, now it's starting to rain. So, we'll see how much we can get done. Uh, so, earlier I showed you all the bits and pieces are in the back of the, the truck. 
and now uh, we're going to open the the bonnet and have a quick look and if it starts to rain even more it's just spotting at the minute then we'll carry on later on so that's something else I bought a nice because it's obligatory in France uh, a nice uh, triangle I'm not going to take it out because uh, I've only got one hand and uh, don't want to put it back together to put it back in the box but uh, that's obligatory in France uh, probably in other countries as well I'm not sure if it's obligatory in Great Britain or not and of course a fluorescent jacket or fluorescent waistcoat whatever you want to call it and over there from Carter Cash the fabulous uh, French uh, motoring chain uh, I bought a thing to clean the windscreen as you're driving sort of well probably not going to be very easy to clean the windscreen using that when you're driving but anyway it means you can reach uh, bits and pieces further away on the screen so uh, the main problem with opening the the bonnet on this truck on mega bread van is that the handle to do it is grey and as you can see all the underneath is grey and dirty so I can never remember where it is exactly under here somewhere shows you how often I open the bonnet it's there just behind the steering column the steering thing there is just there you can't actually see it and uh, I don't think you're going to be able to see it with the camera maybe if I have my uh, smartphone it will be easier to, to film but anyway take it from me it's behind there somewhere it's like a little lever that you pull it's the same colour as this so it's a pain to, to find it took me ages to find it when I first bought the truck nobody told me where it was when I bought it because I made the big mistake of not asking to see under the bonnet there we go shows you how naive I am so you put your hand under here and there's a a catch where is it hang on there we are and I'll try to this is the first time I've tried to film I'm trying to do something with the other hand so we have the it goes up into there somewhere I think it has a hole and the problem with filming with this camera is that um, I like to use the actual screen on the camera first of all which is probably a bit obvious um, but it's not a screen that you can fiddle around with you know you can't change the angle you can't flip it over so that's why you're not seeing much of me apart from in the reflection in the windscreen earlier so I can't actually see what I'm filming if I turn the camera the other way around so it's sort of very tired looking soundproofing under the bonnet I'm hoping to look at the soundproofing and uh, see uh, what I can do about it. So basically, if you've not seen a Kubota engine before, um, well, it's quite simple really, there's not much to it. Uh, you've got the twin cylinder head there, just here, and I was looking online to see what you needed to do to uh, change the glow plugs which are underneath this plate. Here, and apparently you need to uh, take this cover off I'll take this cover off I'm trying to hold the camera at the same time no it's not that, that's the oil I think uh, no it's not that, I should put some gloves on really um, yeah I should put some gloves on really yeah anyway um, I'll just they like that. Um, it's all dirty. Yeek. So you need to basically take, I think it's that cover, I'm not sure. You need to take these off and then unscrew it and take the cover off. And underneath, you need to unscrew a screw on top of each glow plug and then unscrew the glow plug itself. I think that's what I've seen. But uh, that's for another time. So there you've got the CVT transmission. It's a pulley system where the, the pulleys actually expand 
and the belt down here uh, falls in inside the pulley as it expands open opens up like that basically and the belt falls down into the pulley and it changes the ratio I think the other one does the same thing down here this pulley here so what we're looking at at the moment is the the radiator which is on the side of the engine strangely in fact I wonder actually the fact that it's on the side of the engine where does the all the air actually come from because the thing I found a bit odd is that on the side of the van you've got like a panel in fact it's on either side this this panel here and you think there'd be like a vent or something to to bring air into the underneath here and towards the radiator but apparently not so we have the radiator which I need to fill the screen wash is here and I think that's the I suspect that's the oil level just there there's no dipstick for some reason but at least I've not found a dipstick I've looked before I have to admit that the bonnet's not been open very often so basically what I need to do is to um, well, fill the radiator up, fill the screen wash up so it started to rain um, so I'm going to quickly film the bottle today and I think what I'm going to do is uh, well, I'll, I'll come back out later when it's not raining and uh, fill up the radiator and the uh, screen wash so basically you've got the uh, screen wash there on the left Love glass, uh, less uh, 10 degrees, 1 degree. Um, on the right, you've got uh, liquide de refroidissement refrigerant, which is the coolant, which is uh, less than 20 degrees, more than degree. So, what we're going to do is, uh, I'm getting wet, look, see, up. <laughs> um, what we're going to do is, uh, we'll fill those in later, so I'll leave them out here for now and uh, I'm going to go inside so it's the following day and uh, as you can see lovely and sunny and there's still some wind but it's not as bad as it was uh, yesterday in fact the last two days it seems the wind has been more or less the same uh, while uh, back in Leicestershire they've had um, the worst of Hurricane Sahara and uh, some snow here in France we've had some high winds too I don't think it's been as bad so um, I think I mentioned uh, before um, not sure because it's the following day and I can't remember what I videoed yesterday anyway um, a little, little while ago I think it was, uh, was it last week I think uh, I ran the battery down again uh, last time I did that was back in uh, um, November I think it was which I probably already mentioned as well anyway getting old um, so basically um, leaving the headlights on is not really a very good idea uh, it flattens the battery yeah, <laughs> um, doesn't take much so the problem we have at the moment is um, the van needs a service and as you can see you can see that flashing on and off I'll do it again I um, don't know whether that's in focus or not so turn the ignition again and you see a little spanner symbol come up and then minus 55 um, so basically um, that tells me I think the engine at least needs a service um, I mentioned one year now it looks alarming to say minus 55 I guess those are days but uh, <laughs> um, I've not actually uh, used um, the van that much lately uh, there's too much work on at the moment and um, so it's not really suffered as such um, apart from the battery going flat uh, but that's due to the cold weather no doubt it's been very uh, chilly and wet and damp and horrible um, so basically uh, what I'm going to do today is to replace the um, or top up even 
that, that's out of focus. I'll get used to this camera. I'll be happy when my smaller camera is back from uh, from the Alps with my kids. Um, so basically I've got to top up the coolant and the screen wash because there's none left. So I've probably chosen the wrong time of day to film the, the engine because the sun is actually behind the van. Um, it's morning. Uh, not sure in what time it is at the moment. I think it's probably uh, around 10 o'clock. And it's not really easy to film in dark places here. So I'll give you a good view of the Kabuto um, uh, the Kibuto, yeah, Kibuto, um, 400 uh, cc engine that's in the Mega Bread van. As I said yesterday, you've got the radiator at the side, you've got the CVT transmission down there. Um, so I've, what I've got to do is fill up, fill up these two things here. There we go. Just looking at this, well, it's just dirt. Oh, you can see my rubbish gloves, my Carter Cash Specials, cheap gloves. Um, they're probably going to be very fragile for sort of when I come to turn this thing to open it and so on. So we'll see. We'll see how we get on. So we've got the funnel to do the job. So we'll get on with it. After touching various things with my gloves, I'm no doubt getting my camera all dirty and covered in oil and stuff. So that's probably not a good move. Anyway, um, looking at the top of the radiator here, I'm not sure how I'm going to to do this because there's. I don't know if you can see it. Let's get my head under the um, the focus. It's less reliable than the the phones. Uh, it's a bit out of focus, isn't it? And I've got my glasses on, so I can't see it very well on the screen. Anyway, there's like a, a curved bit uh, here in the gap where the coolant goes inside, and obviously my funnel's not going to fit in there. I think I've got a smaller funnel somewhere, I'll have to have a look. Um, it's reassuring to see that the screen wash is the same colour as the screen wash I've bought, so probably it's the same one, I'm not sure. So we'll have to see about that. I'm going to see if I can find the smaller funnel. So that's the funnel I was using, and there's a smaller one. Yeah, there's not much difference really. So, well, there is. There is, in fact, yeah. Um, there we go. So this one, let me just get rid of that funnel up there. So this one should fit, I hope. Oh, let's have a look. There we go, and that fits in there like that. Looks a bit annoying that the this pipe for the screen wash is in the way but uh, I should think that will be okay because I don't like the idea of trying to get a bottle of coolant just to give you an idea to pick it up in fact it's not a bottle it's a bloody can jerry can there we go so it's quite big I'm trying to pour that into a little hole in the radiator the top of the radiator uh, it's gonna be fun so anyway we need two hands to do this job, so uh, I'll get on with it. As you probably see, I'm pretty hopeless at this sort of thing. Um, so what I've done is uh, filled up the coolant and there's quite a bit come out. Uh, I'm hoping it's not come out of the radiator, I don't think it has. But uh, I had a little bit of a clean around because I spilt it everywhere, even with the funnel, because the if we look at the top there, the uh, the sort of overflow is very small, so you just pour a tiny bit of coolant into the funnel, and it overflows and goes everywhere. Obviously, I'm not doing it right, but uh, anyway, I managed to get it so I was not spilling too much. That was my first attempt, was spilling all that on the on the ground, but. Um, it seems that it didn't really need a lot of coolant in the end because the if you can see this you can see the coolant there just at the top level I think that's probably uh, about the limit before there was none there there was no coolant at all and there was just uh, the little sort of like tongue with the hole at the side 
it's like a curved piece of metal in the hole which leaves like a sort of um, gap to fill the radiator up with um, so I think we could say that uh, well it needed some a little bit of coolant but not a lot and so most of it's fallen either that side of the radiator and onto the ground or towards the well, I guess the uh, outlet pipe from the radiator I'm guessing you see I'm not very mechanically minded I've said this before anyway uh, so now for the screen wash hopefully that's not going to be so messy so famous last word it was a bit messy I've got it all over my hand and uh, on the bodywork of Mega Bread Van there let's go and get a cloth and give that a wipe <laughs> Here's the cloth that I was using to wipe the dog's feet with. Okay, so is that white? Get rid of it. The front. I'm not sure it's going to do any harm. It uh, doesn't look so nice when it's dripping everywhere. It's in there as well, not even. Up. There we go, nice and clean. Right, yeah, so there's no level or anything on the side of the bottle, so I just filled it up to the corner. So it's probably a little bit full. You can just see there. I'll just see if I can focus that. No, it's not doing it. So there you go. So we're going to give things a little bit of a try. Hopefully, the radiator's okay. Looks okay. It's not the, wa the water. <laughs> it's not water, is it? The, the coolant isn't going down, so I guess there's not a radiator leak, uh, which is what we had before in the engine blue. But when there was a leak, we didn't see any anything coming out. So it was a bit of a strange situation. I think somebody didn't do something when they sold me the van. Uh, they probably didn't put enough coolant in, or I didn't top it up. But uh, it was very strange after using it for just uh, four months, uh, the engine blew. So quite a strange state of affairs and me being quite naive didn't even check the the coolant and now I do no I am sorry so yeah that's not going down so we'll get the caps back on and we'll give the engine a try you got to look at the state of that bonnet oh mega bread van needs a good clean I tell you so I'm gonna give the <laughs> I'm gonna give the engine a try uh, well, get, get to turn over. Yeah, I think it needs an oil change as well. That's pretty obvious, really, I suppose. But uh, it's not something I can really do at the moment um, because I need to get the, the car, I'll get underneath the, the, the van, rather, the car. In fact, the <laughs> it's quite funny really because uh, the this van uh, shares the same Kubota engine as uh, as the cars, the XM cars. I think they're still using the engine, um, the 400 um, what do I say, the 400Z, I think it's called. Um, so you've got cars going about, but the the newer cars have better soundproofing. Let's face it, but uh, yeah. So I think I might have to either take it to the local garage, um, you know, to get the oil change done. Uh, in fact, when the engine blew the last time, uh, I'll give you a bit, a bit of a view of the garden, it's a bit prettier than looking at the bonnet. Um, when the engine blew last time, even if it's out of focus. Oh, I'm not going to use this camera again, I tell you. There we are, must be better. So the last time the oh it's the house look oh kitchen door last time the engine blew um, we left the van at the local garage just around the corner um, I don't think he was prepared to do anything to it really because uh, obviously you'd need a, a new engine and uh, so it stayed parked there for the best part of uh, four or five days until I managed to get in touch with the original uh, cellar I think I have a little wander around because you can just see the garden. So, um, 
contacted the original seller and they managed to do me a deal on replacing the engine because it was just one month out of warranty and so basically um, he replaced the engine but while it was uh, the garage here in our village uh, the chap there said to me that uh, the rear shock absorbers were a bit uh, shot uh, and it's been what uh, what it was in October I think it was October 2018 and now we're in uh, early February um, early February 2020 so uh, I've left it a little while um, there's not been any problems really uh, the, bat, the bat bounces about a bit but I think that's because it's relatively empty so basically this engine was replaced okay and uh, because of that I guess they reset the clock for the service I mean the original engine had 88,000 kilometers on it and this one had about 27 or 28,000 I think it was so you know because a new a new engine is something like 4,000 euros and a second hand one is in the region of depending on obviously the kilometer uh, about 1,500 um, and well I was looking at ones um, around the sort of 30 40,000 kilometers mark and that was the sort of prices you're getting for a second-hand engine so basically the 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 chap who sold me this which is um, a small dealership that sells some Permi uh, cars and a few vans they don't tend to have them very often uh, he, he sort of did me a deal and said, well, including transport and uh, labour, 1,500. So it was a no-brainer. Uh, I was in a bit of a sticky situation. And so basically they reset the clock to, to the engine. Uh, and obviously, um, well, I guess I know, 55 days ago was a year since they put the engine in, but um, it must be about that. So I'll give this a try. And it's also not starting straight away, so it's a little bit of a headache. We had that starting problem before in my previous videos, um, and I charged it in when did I say it was? Uh, was it October or November? I can't remember which now. So I charged it then, I charged the battery then, and it was starting more or less first time. So I was quite pleased. Whereas before, it's taking sort of like three, four, five times turning over to try to get the thing to start um, so at the moment uh, it tends to start sort of second time um, so we'll see but um, what was I going to say um, yeah uh, I bought some glow plugs as well some new ones they're not going to be second hand are they uh, so some new glow plugs um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace those so I don't know how old the ones in the engine are. I don't think they probably... Well, they probably didn't replace them in the second-hand engine. Um, not really got a lot of confidence in that that having happened, really. Um, so I'm going to change the glow plugs and see if that changes matters. They're going to need changing anyway, and I don't think it will hurt. Um, and if it's not those, then I guess it must be the battery getting a bit weak. So we'll see. Let's see if we can get this... Uh, and I'll, I'll try and reheat the glow plugs again. We go through the old business of the being reminded of the service, and there we go. All right, let's start in. Have I done something wrong? Have I broken something just by filling something up? The glow plugs are just, you hear like a click, but well, it should show on the screen as well. well I don't, didn't really notice whether it lit up or not. Um, you'll probably see it in the video uh, when you when it's played back. Um, anyway, the glow plugs have engaged because it won't click, so... No. Have I broken it? I think we need to... What I'm going to do is I'm going to... There we go. There's the light for the glow plugs. That's gone off. That's come on. Okay, I think I'll stop filming. 
and see if I can get it to start. So I want to end up with a video of me starting the engine over and over again. Um, it's a bit tedious. Well, that was ironic. Uh, as soon as I switched the camera off, turn turn the ignition, it started. So hopefully it'll start again. So glow plugs out. Okay. Everything's lit up. There we go. Starting up now. The problem is, is that now I've got this camera and I've not got my microphone, uh, which doesn't actually fit on the camera anyway. You can see. Obviously, it's in neutral, so I don't want to go now. Let's see if you can hear me anyway. Uh, I'm not getting any noise. I've got to shout a little bit. I've got to shout too loud, otherwise, the neighbors don't know what I'm going to do. Um, but anyway, it seems to be starting a photo. So if you can see the engine vibrates quite a lot, uh, it's very much the noise that I've got. Uh, I've got to put the bonnet over there. I bet when I come to do the video, uh, you won't be able to hear what I'm saying. Anyway, so now the next test is the, the screen wipe. Um, we'll give that a try. So, in fact, what I'm going to do <laughs> before there's a silly accident, um, I'll go and close the um, bonnet because uh, obviously. Spraying the windscreen is not really a dumb thing when you've got the bonnet open. Right, okay, engine's off, the silence is returned. Oh, there's a nice cobweb in there. Anyway, um, yeah, well, it's not, it's sat here and it's not been used much, so that's what you get. You get the cobwebs and things. Um, oh, what's that down there? There's a leak. I hope that's not the, the, the coolant gone into the cab. I doubt it somehow. Anyway, I need to look at that because I've tried to repair the corner where there was a small crack and it seems there's some water there. I don't know where that's coming from. We'll have a look after I finish filming. Anyway, um, I've noticed this with, with, <laughs> noticed with this camera is that um, unlike the telephone, um, the angle is not very wide. In fact, I think even my compact uh, Nikon A900 has a, a wider angle than this. So it means that trying to film sort of a lot, you can't. You have to keep turning the camera around and giving everybody a headache like this, you know. Anyway, um, so we'll give the, the, the ignitions on. So we'll give the, the screen washer wipe a, a try. A wipe. What am I saying? A wipe. The window wipe is wipe. The screen wash washes. Thanks for watching my video about the Mega brake van. Um, I hope you found it interesting. You know, all the fiddling about uh, with the uh, screen wash and the uh, uh, coolant and so on in the radiator. Um, if you're interested in these vehicles or if you own one. Um, then feel free to get in touch. It'd be great to get some interaction going about these vehicles. So, thanks again. See you in another video. Take care of yourselves and remember, please subscribe. Let's see if you can hear me anyway. Uh, I'm not getting noise.